All right, y'all, we back to check out some more food conspiracies. All right, before we get to the video, remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's check them out. If you go to McDonald's anywhere in the world, you will find french fries and you will find that they're always made from the same potato, the russet Burbank potato from America that's unusually long and difficult to grow, but that's what they want. When you're McDonald's, you like those red boxes with a little bouquet of very long chip. And they further insist that they have no blemishes at all. And there's a very common defect of russet Burbank potatoes called net necrosis. And you've seen potatoes with little brown lines. Well, McDonald's won't buy them. And the only way to eliminate that is to eliminate an aphid. And the only way to do that is with a pesticide called Monitor that is so toxic that the farmers who grow these potatoes in Idaho won't venture outside into their fields for five days after they spray. And then when they harvest their potatoes, they, they have to put them in these atmosphere controlled sheds the size of a football stadium because they're not edible for six weeks. They have to off gas all the chemicals in them. How many of us used to crave, literally crave those McDonald's fries, bro? Like, you may still do if you still, you know what I mean, eat the McDonald's fries and stuff like that. I, I go there normally for the breakfast, you know what I mean? So this ain't me just saying that I don't go. To, nah, I'm going to keep it real and be honest with y'all. I go there for the breakfast every now and again, you know what I mean? But those fries used to hit. I don't know. They just had the right amount of salt and everything like that. But never once did I think about the potato, what potato or something like that. Like, this stuff is deep. This stuff runs deep, fam. We really got to monitor things. Do you feel exhausted? Like you just must not be strong or committed enough to reach your health goals? Like something must be wrong with you? There actually might be something wrong with you. And 88% of America. And food companies don't want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. My oh my, how things have changed. From having three square meals a day, sitting down with your family, having to finish your vegetables before you could leave the table, to what we do now, which is snacking all day, grazing like cattle. Except we're rarely grazing on something fresh. Instead, we're eating quick food. The major food companies know this, and they are very smart. In order for their business to boom, we've been set up for failure. Overweight and obese rates in America have gone through the roof. Jeez, and look at that, fellas. This say men, 75%, 67% overweight or obese in America, bro. It's us, fellas. It's us. And I, I agree with her, man. That's why I think something that struck me the other day I was listening to where they said, like, when you go to the grocery store, try to eat like things on the outside of the aisles. Try to eat the things on the outside. You know what I mean? That's where your 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 veggies and your different things are. Your meats are out there. You know what I mean? You're, you're kind of your healthy stuff as much as you possibly can. It was like everything on the aisles, processed. All kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So I was thinking about that. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. That was the first time I ever heard somebody say that, you know, as you're trying to get to a better place of eating. You know what I mean? Because not to say that the stuff on the outside of the aisles isn't bad for you, too. It's just while you're trying to get to a better place of eating, try to start there is what I was hearing. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about that part. These two companies, Upside Foods, in good meats. These are the first companies to receive approval to sell synthetic meat. You know, it's very interesting. If you do a Google search for the company Good Meat, the parent company is a company called Eat Just. Now, Eat Just is this company that you see right here on your screen. You've probably seen it. I like I, mainly if you go to like Sprouts or if you go to like these bougie like grocery stores. Actually, I think it's in like Albertsons and like Ralph's. I live in California, so it, it might be different grocery stores where you live. But there, there's a Sprouts. very good likelihood that this is in your uh, local supermarket. And this is like a, a fake egg alternative. And it comes in like this really weird, like yellow looking like carton substance. And I tried it and it, it was absolutely disgusting. There might be some of y'all who might like it. 
it is what it is, that's on you, but I thought that this was absolutely disgusting. But you wanna know what's very interesting about this company. This article from, CN, uh, from CNBC, let me make this bigger here so you can see this, because I'm gonna tie this all together like a puzzle. These two companies, Upside... That's crazy. I bet, and, and, and like you said, like this stuff is in our stores. We don't even know it. So you could be accidentally or intentionally trying something new and grab something, not knowing. You know what I mean? Ultimately, that still falls on us. We should be aware. But you, we've all done it. Just grab something. Oh, that looks new. Looks like it may be good. Let's try it. You know what I mean? And not even knowing that it's a synthetic meat. Not even knowing that. That's scary. That's scary. It's almost like somebody will walk up to the meat area, look around to see who's watching, and start stacking this meat over there, trying to get it to blend in with the rest. Because most people, what they do when they grab something, when they go to the meat area, they look at the meat, they look at the price. They look at the meat, and they look at the price. They don't often pay attention to the name. Some of us do now that we've awakened to what's going on around us, but a lot of people just look at the price and the meat. Make sure the meat ain't turning a certain color, that it's fresh. They look, make sure they're in the either poultry, beef, pork, whatever area they want to be in. See that? And that's it. And they, Because we're in such of a rush in life. Everything is in a hurry. So you're just grabbing stuff and you're looking at a few key things to see if it passes the eye test and the pocket test. And that's it. And you're moving along. And you can almost, you can grab something that is synthetic. That's scary. Lord, as researchers from George Washington University are calling for stronger regulations after finding phthalates and replacement plasticizers in more than 80% of the popular fast foods they tested. National chains like McDonald's, Domino's, and Chipotle all have something in common, according to new research. Potentially dangerous chemicals found in the food. To be honest, the regulations for phthalates don't make sense. Dr. Lariah Edwards is the lead researcher of the study that analyzed fast food, finding phthalates and other plasticizers leaching into the food we eat. The chemicals are used to make plastic soft for food packaging, processing equipment, and handling gloves. They are banned in toys, but they're... Lord, as researchers from George Washington... Well, I'm surprised that, you know, <laughs> they let them put these news articles out. Because <clears throat> you got to think about it. Behind these, these, these tycoons are behind some of these companies, man. You know what I mean? So I'm surprised they let this stuff get out. I know they trying because it makes your company look bad when stuff like this comes out about it. It makes it look bad. Now, fortunate enough, most people don't watch the news, but they got TikTok or they got Instagram or they got Facebook or they got Twitter. And these articles are everywhere. So I'm surprised they let them get out, man. I know they be fighting hard for these articles like this to not get out, you know? Food companies, who secretly changed their food? We did a sneaky thing. What is it all, bro? We increased the spaces in the chocolate, so it would be like less chocolate. Even you did that? Like we did it so that we don't increase prices. And people weren't happy, right? Yeah, so we had to like get it back again, but increase the prices. You thought you were sneaky, but not at all. People on the internet like focus on everything. I don't know how they noticed. You really thought people are not gonna notice? Food companies, who secretly changed Hey, hey, man, that's true, bro. Because if you like me, man, I just keep saying, like, if you see a bag of chips these days, there's so much more air in these chips, but the prices are still climbing, bro. It's almost to the point where now you're at like a third of a bag, if that, if that, when you get a bag of chips. It's crazy to me, man. Think about the candy bar sizes back in the day. Smaller. Than what they used to be prices gone way up imagine our grandparents you're taking them into the store and then what's the first thing they say would you look at the price goodness gracious that for a candy bar and for us we're like yeah this is what we're used to they're like sheesh are you crazy that's how far we but this the socks slowly 
shrinking slowly. And they do it to where you don't notice it. You know what I mean? They've been slowly doing it over time. It's scary. This sounds like I'm making it up, okay? But <laughs> the three biggest cereal manufacturers, Post, General Mills, and Kellogg, are teaming up together, threatening to file a lawsuit because they're saying that not being able to describe their junk food as healthy is a violation of their freedom of speech. Can you imagine? This is in response to the FDA trying to put parameters around what you can and can't call healthy. Remember I told you about Big Dairy? Here's Big Cereal. You can't make this stuff up. Like, if I wrote this into a novel or a screenplay, people would be like, that would never happen. Yeah, it's right here. We live in dystopia. This sounds like I'm making- Okay, so, hey man, if they allow that, <laughs> if they allow that, then you're gonna have liquor companies, beer companies coming out talking about, hey, this is healthy. This in my beer is healthy, man. You know what I mean? Like, how could you even fix your mouth to even think you were going to get that by? Like, they, they want us to think that. That's just crazy to me. You'll have tobacco companies. You'll have all kind of companies trying to come at the CDC. Be like, hey, man, if they got that off, then uh, this is healthy, too. You know what I mean? Because it has this in it. Therefore, this is healthy. Ta-da! No. <laughs> no, man, you cannot do that. Uh, chips, bro, like Takis. If you ever read it, bro, it says, bro, it messes up the inner line of your stomach, bro, whole time, feel me? But guess what? The FDA, they're still going to prescribe it to people. They're still going to put it in stores because, though, they're saying they're, um, the football player will be like, oh, well, nobody told you to eat it. But, bro, why are you even putting it out there for us to even be able to consume it? That uh, chips, bro, like Takis. Man, I, I, my son has gotten better, but it was a stretch, and I didn't know, or I wouldn't have even allowed it, but it was a stretch where he was on those Takis heavy. I mean, heavy. every time I go to the store, Dad, like, he would call me on the phone. Hey, Dad, you going, where, where you headed? I'm about to run to the store, get something for dinner tonight, you know what I mean, grab a few things like that. Well, if you can, can you grab me some Takis? Grab me some Takis? It, it was to the point to where if I went to the store, I already knew he wanted them, so I would grab them. You know what I mean? But then I just started, like, noticing and hearing certain things. You know what I mean? I didn't hear the stomach liner thing, but I started hearing certain things about it. So I stopped buying them for him. You know what I mean? And, and to hear that just makes me feel so much better, man, because... I didn't know. And a lot of this stuff boils down to us not knowing. Us not knowing. That's scary. Have any of y'all kids done that? Or y'all y'all self eating those Takis like that? I used to, I wasn't the Takis guy, but I love the, uh, what's, what's the Cheetos one? The Hot Cheetos or what is it? The, the um, Flaming Hot Cheetos. Those. Oh, I was on those. Heavy at one point in time, loved them. But I just, after a while, I just was like, oh, this cannot be good for me. This cannot be healthy for me to continue thinking I could just eat these bags like this. No, I can't. So I had to back up off them to the point where I don't even eat them no more. Anyone noticed anything horrifying? Anyone notice anything horrifying? What is this saying? Meal time, meals made easy. A broccoli, cauliflower, cow, carrot. Yeah. That, that's crazy. How do you have the raw meat on the cooked food? That mac and cheese looks cooked, but it's laying on raw meat. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. I, <laughs> I've never seen that. I've seen the meal times made ready. And this says meal times made easy. 
So, you know what I mean? You think either I have to cook it all and it just has it together and all I got to do is just pop it in. Like most of the time, it's like crock pot stuff. You put everything into the crock pot and you go and you come back, it's ready to go. You know what I mean? I've seen those, but never something where part of it's cooked, part of it's not, and they're touching. That's, that's, yeah. It, they don't even have a company that, that made you know, meal time ready to cook. So it says ready to cook, but the Mac looks done. That looks done. I don't know. I'm, I'm confused about that one. Y'all let me know. Uh, Y'all let me know. Probably the whole thing maybe goes in the oven or something like that. Or in a pot or whatever. This says it has a pot there. But um, you probably put the whole thing in and it probably cooks the Mac the rest of the way or something like that. So I, I don't know. Seems odd to me a little bit though. Over 18 food processing companies burned down. Are they all and being they burned down? Fire at the Saladino food processing plant. Now, here's a look at the fire last night near Shaw and Golden State. Several employees had to be evacuated from the building while firefighters put out the flames. So just moments before we went to air tonight, a plane apparently crashed at a General Mills plant, a food plant in Covington, Georgia. Six tractor trailers are reportedly on fire. We're seeing pictures from the scene right now. This is the second time in a week something like this has happened. On April 14th, the plane crashed into the Gem State Processing in East Idaho. What's going on here? Well, the story gets weirder. Food processing plants all over the country seem to be catching fire. A couple of days ago, a fire destroyed the headquarters of Azure Standard, one of the largest organic food distributors in the country. At the end of last month, a fire severely damaged a fresh onion packing facility in South Texas. In Oregon, a potato chip processing plant to support a boiler explosion that sent workers to the hospital. Here's a news report on that. Eastern Oregon, where crews are battling a major fire at a potato chip processing plant. Air 12 flew over the scene at Shearer's Foods on Highway 207 in Hermiston. We're told the fire was caused by an explosion of a portable boiler there. Two people were taken to the hospital. So industrial accidents happen, of course, but this is a lot of industrial accidents at food processing facilities at the same time the president's warning us about food shortages. They're getting hit by planes and catching fire. What is going on here exactly? Jason Rance hosts a radio show in Seattle and over 18 food process that's that's hard for me to say that that's not by design that's extremely hard for me to say you know what i mean even if you believe in coincidences that's hard to explain right there so what's happening behind behind the scenes you know what i mean what when that goes down food scarcity so that drives the prices up. Like, <laughs> what is happening? Are they trying to get the insurance money? Is it bankruptcy? Is it, what, what are they trying to accomplish? Because one, okay, two, okay, three, okay, four, you're starting to kind of look around. Five, something ain't right here, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold on. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Arson investigations need to start happening, or should have been started happening by now. Now we should be looking at all of these companies around the world. Let's try to see which one is the next one. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You have a problem on your hands. Start to connect the dots. Who are behind some of these companies? Are they connected? Like what's happening? This is vital. These are food plants. The people eat food coming from these food plants. So this should be a high level of importance. Yeah, that's, whew. 
So what if I told you that the full pyramid that we learned to school was fake? Let's get into it. As y'all can see here, we have fruits and we have vegetables. Then at the bottom, we have meats and dairy. They did not have their own section in the full pyramid. Now let's look on how this changed. Nutritionists and dietarians carefully format the original guidelines for what to eat for optional health, which at first stipulated meats and dairy should not be eaten one to two times per day. However, it didn't sit well with big name food corporations. According to some, like Lisa Light, one of the people who worked for the USDA during the time of the food pyramid being developed, the eventual changes made to plan made it clear that the food pyramid had been sold to its highest bidder. In effect, the powerful dairy and meat manufacturers, they worried that directives villainized their product Due to its pushback, the food pyramid was evoked to its current form. We have been lied to, we have been lied to, we have been lied to. Drink your milk, it'll make your bones strong. Lie. Eat meat, it'll make you healthier. Lie. And look right here, since the time it was integrated in the 90s, obesity skyrocketed while heart disease and diabetes and other chronic diseases had also risen ain't that some crazy let me know and, and people are tired of it man people are tired of being sick people are tired of having to go to the doctor people are tired of feeling sluggish people are tired of it, man but i could vividly vividly you remember man vividly i'm saying bro think about studying the food pyramid back when we were little in school making little class kid bop songs to it to help you remember it for the test that you had to take. Thinking this was the way. As we continue to see a steady rise in obesity and health issues. Why? Why would they do that to us? Why is that? Why is this happening to us? I'm thinking I'm I'm eating right. Even when you go work out, you were told, you know what I mean? It was a point in time in my life where I worked out and a friend of mine was was doing the whole bodybuilding thing. So he was eating steaks, lean, what he thought was lean steaks, lean ground beef, chicken. You know what I mean? He was eating that like six times a day, especially the chicken. He would go buy the, the chicken breast, cut it up, eat the chicken breast with some um, some rice, and he would have veggies. And he would eat that multiple times a day, even so much so that he would take containers around with him, thinking that was the way to go. Multiple times, six times a day he was eating chicken breast, rice, veggie with, you know what I mean? Other things that he was eating throughout the day for protein or whatever, those shakes and stuff like that. Imagine what that was doing to him. But he thought he was doing the right thing, following this guideline that this was healthy. So it's like, it's to the point where, man, I, I don't know. It's hard to know what to believe anymore. Like, I just need to find me some leaves and just eat that all day and just deal with how I feel. I'm, it's, it's to the point. A decade now have been actually making fake lettuce, fake eggs. What I thought was even more weird, apparently they glue meat together. You know, when you buy a steak, you think it's a solid steak, but some of the cheap steaks are actually just a bunch of different end pieces and they have this weird glue and they glue ends together and they apparently do it with chicken too. I, can, I think that's why it says on a lot of chicken packages, a cheap chicken. This is. I've heard that. I've definitely heard about the glue so much so that me and my son have a running joke about that when we eat steak. Like, oh, dad, because used to, man, the fat was like the best part when I was growing up. 
You know what I mean? It had so much of the flavor from the seasoning and the grill, the charbroil on the fat. Oh my gosh. You saved it for last because you wanted to get all the juices up and you eat. We ate that as kids. I know it makes you want to throw up hearing that. Sorry, got to be honest with you. But then as you got older and started hearing things, that was one of the things me and my son heard. And it's been a running joke ever since. Oh, dad, that one got a lot of glue in it. Oh, dad, that one has a ton of glue in it. And we actually say that. So when I hear somebody echo that, I'm like, <laughs> he's not lying, folks. I think the same thing. Listen, man, y'all can at me in the comment section and let me know what you think about this video and some of the information we've heard. How does it make you feel? Leave it in the comments. Till next one, I'm gone, man. Peace.